Scott Jones. I've uh, had my own consulting company um, since I was a junior at MIT. Uh, I kind of dropped into Julia three years ago, uh, fell in love with it within a couple days, if not within an hour, and was working with it on a startup, small startup in um, Belgium. Not much money, but it was great fun. Um, and one of the thing, problems I had early on was just uh, that strings didn't seem that important to a lot of the um, scientific community. And I had spent a lot of time working in strings and databases and such. So that motivated me to become a rather fanatic contributor early on to Julia um, to try to improve speed of conversions, uh, handling edge cases, uh, documenting some of the stuff in strings uh, like that. Um, let's see, oops, oh there, it's moving. That is by Kermulian, um, if he sees this talk, uh, he's wonderful. Anyone who wants a logo for their Julia organizations should definitely contact uh, him. And this basically explains why I did this. I've been working for many years on uh, unstructured and semi-structured data, uh, originally in the healthcare market. Um, we needed very fast string processing. I'm sorry, but UTF-8 just doesn't cut it for that. Um, also needed to be able to handle uh, lots of crufty old encodings um, that uh, people who are used to the web these days, the younger generation doesn't realize there's still a huge amount of data in, say, 8-bit Russian character sets or shift gifs in Japan or Chinese character sets. It's, it's important to be able to deal with. Uh, plus, there's a lot of stuff out there that is just people lie when they put, say, oh, this is... Uh, ANSI Latin 1. It's enough it had to become official with, uh, I believe, with HTML documents. That if they say that it's ANSI 1, you can't, that doesn't mean anything. It very, very well may be Windows 1252. Um, we also needed to use the libraries such as ICU, which is kind of the gold standard. People, sometimes people don't like it because it's very large. Um, and also for my own debugging in Julia, because we didn't have a nice fancy visual debugger, I don't really need that anyway. I wanted something better to use than printf uh, when I was dealing with debugging. And I also, I don't like to have all the Unicode characters in my source code, uh, but I like to be able to print them out. So I wanted an easy way to be able to handle all the fun characters that you have in Julia with the backslash um, syntax. Now let me see if I can get out of this quick. Oops. Oops, where did it go? <laughs> no, you don't need to see my music. And this got shrunk. Let's see how the bench, okay, this is, basically, this is just kind of proving what I was trying to do with uh, writing a replacement package for strings. And I did this because the base the Julia package was just um, not performant enough for what we were trying to do. Um, and so this December I started writing a replacement package, trying to deal with all the issues of performance with languages where everything tends to be three bytes in UTF-8. Um, variable length encodings make, you can't really do SIMD processing and the like on variable length encoding. And let's see, did. I wanted to have it oh, all nice and ready. Let's see if it's okay. There's that was. Where's my benchmark one? Oops. What's hey? Um. Well, let me show something else. Next time I'm going to take a couple weeks and try to prepare all this. And I would like anyone who's interested in strings to uh, join the Julia String organization. Um, um, 
and basically there's a whole set of packages for dealing with strings. Uh, I can't get what is, I don't know why it's showing like that. Chrome's messed up. Okay. Um, and I've been busy today trying to get everything passing. That's all the green badges. There's still a few things that are messed up because uh, things like current underscore module were not just deprecated, they're gone. Um, uh, let's see, there's a whole set of things here. There's the formatting, which I wanted to talk about quick. Um, which is just a way of, within a string, you can format as if you were doing C style formatting, but the thing you're formatting is directly there. It's not like you have to look at positions. For me, that's a lot easier for debugging. There's also some stuff about being able to set defaults based on the type, um, which makes it a lot more convenient. You don't have to do these crazy uh, C style, um, percent this, whatever. You can just say backslash open paren, uh, per backslash percent open paren, and some variable. And based on knowing it's a floating point or integer or whatever, you can specify what you want, how many digits of precision or whatever, how you want that to be printed out without having to you know, overload show or anything. It's just for there on that line for the debugging. Um, no printfs needed. And I was, I've also been work, working on getting Python style formatting working for that. Um, but I'm not a Pythonista, so C style was what I needed. Uh, also, I added uh, reject support that actually is thread safe. Um, that was an issue for me that supports more than just UTF-8, which is a, the base reject support is only UTF-8, and actually doesn't work correctly uh, with the currently the new string type, which allows invalid uh, UTF-8 str strings. Um, and it's uh, thread safe, so you can use it in multiple threads. Uh, um, now, string literals, this is, I put in a different style of interpolation with the backslash so that you can actually have strings that you have dollar signs in, easier for LaTeX and LaTeX and other things. Um, and it's kind of compatible with Swift's uh, uh, string literal, string literals, but it's easy to, you can actually add whatever extensions you want just by setting um, setting something into a dictionary. And I use that to set up um, a different output for like emojis. And where's that? String entities. Oops. Yeah, I've, you can specify a LaTeX entity, an emoji entity. Let me see if I can quickly show one of those uh, if I want to say. What's uh, what's a good? Well, I, this is the one I always use for testing. But oh, it was working. Okay, this is on six. I tried to get it running last night on there, but you can also do your emojis and. whatever you want, whatever emoji, whatever. You can also do HTML aliases, you know, with the ampersand, whatever. Uh, all of those will work. It, just for sticking things in that you don't <coughs> want to have funky things in your code that you don't know how to type it in again. That's just easier for editing. Um, I'm not sure what else to... Uh, I should say the big, that's just part of it. The big thing that I was trying to do was to get very performant strings and let's see if I can find on, I'm just going to run it in front of you guys and then it, I broke it all. Um, uh, let's see, actually have a,
this is just some early benchmarking um, showing different types of text, like French text, uh, how, because there are a lot of people saying, oh, well, we have to use UTF-8 because it is so much uh, better as far as space, but I have here files, uh, about 20, 30 files uh, from different languages around the world um, that, uh, and unfortunately this doesn't show with all the colors, but uh, if you run it on your screen, it shows when things are within 5%, it just shows them black. If my code is slower than, than base Julia strings, it shows it in red. Uh, when it's faster, it shows it in green. It's basically all green, except when you're doing just very short ASCII-only strings, um, you know, like Telugu duck text from India. Uh, you can see that the ratios here, 10 times faster, three times faster, uh, 12 times, it's, yeah, 58 times faster. Now, one, just last slide that I had, if I can find a slide, that is, I put this, this is all on Julia, uh, juliastring.org. Um, I have a whole page I call the Oscars for people who have helped me, including the four founders. Um, Tom Breloff, who put in a lot of some of the formatting stuff, or I, I stole it from him. Um, Chris, Jacob uh, Quinn, and uh, basically a ton, Bogomel and Lyndon and others. I think, yeah, Jacob, yeah, you were there too, for early talk about strings and what could be done. Um, and from we land for the logos. <laughs> Sorry for such a uh, haphazard. Discussion. Yeah. If I ever if I ever get invited back, I promise I'll spend like a month before. This is the very first talk I've given in my life. So, mm -hmm. questions? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I just use standard locations and, and create them on the fly based on the Unicode, which is now at Unicode 11, um, on the same places because late, the LaTeX ones are really a mess because I use them from four or five conflicting sources. Um, and, and then I bring in the ones that Julia has defined on their own um, for you know, LaTeX-like. Uh, but even simpler than that. Yeah. So there is a <coughs> Unicode split. <coughs> does it tell you how? Does it tell you how? how oh yeah, back. How, I was yeah, looking at the, the tab completion sequence. That's why you type, and then when you click tab, it'll undo some uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. and, and if it's kind of ambiguous, it will show you a whole bunch of stuff. My problem was that that isn't available in all the editors, and I, I use old school editors, and so. Uh, that, that, that page is not adequate. I was looking at it five minutes ago. <laughs> Someone okay. in, in the Discord. sounds strange worrying so much about strings, but uh, there are a lot of things with natural language processing in that where it's critical to have good performance um, and to be able to do certain operations. You want to be able to do them in order one, not have to uh, chop things up. Uh, and also, a lot of the operations are much, much, much faster if you have validated strings. And that, I think, is an important part that you don't have garbage in, garbage out with your data. Thank <laughs> you.